This is rental car number 133, and today I'm driving the 2019 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited 4x4. Before we get started, I just want to say an extra big thanks to uh, three of my Patreon supporters, Jackson, Redneck Ram, and William Holmes. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, I haven't driven a Grand Cherokee in quite some time, so I was pretty excited to get this one. This is a four-door midsize SUV. This one happens to be in velvet red pearl, and it retails for about $41,000. So it's uh, it's not a cheap SUV, and it's got quite a bit of fun stuff to talk about, including an 8.4-inch uh, Uconnect display, which I really like. But let's get started with the specs by looking under the hood. Uh, this thing has a 3.6-liter V6. It's a 24-valve VVT. It's got an 8-speed automatic transmission that comes standard, and this thing kicks out 295 horsepower at 6,400 RPMs, and you feel it. This thing is actually really fun to drive. Gas mileage? Eh, pretty decent. 18 miles per gallon in the city, 25 on the highway with a combined rating of 21. Again, not bad for a mid-size SUV. Your fuel tank capacity is 24.6 gallons, pretty large. So by me, uh, gas is, is pretty reasonable. It's $2.95 in the Chicago suburbs right now. So that means around here, uh, you can fill this thing up for about $72. All right, so that's a lot of specs, but let's talk about what it's actually like to drive this car. I really care about three main things, handling, acceleration, and cabin noise. And the, uh, the Grand Cherokee hits all those points. Handling first, this thing has 18-inch aluminum wheels, and they handle the road great. This thing is really stable around corners. I didn't feel like it was slipping at all, and I felt really safe and in control the whole time I was driving this vehicle. Acceleration is also great. Remember, you get 295 horsepower with this thing, so you got some power behind you. And uh, it sounds good, and it accelerates extremely well, especially for a mid-size SUV like this. So I was really happy with acceleration. Cabin noise is also pretty good. I tend to do most of my driving on the interstate. I'm going about 70, 75 most of the time and listening to podcasts, and I didn't have to bump up the volume at all when I was going at those speeds, which in my book is a pretty great thing. So overall, I am very, very happy with the drivability of the Grand Cherokee. So here's the key fob, five buttons on the front, Jeep's logo on the back. On the front, we have an unlock and a lock button, a hatch release, a remote start button, and a panic button right here. On the back, in addition to Jeep's logo, you also have a small switch right here. If you push it up, you can pull this silver piece out to reveal an actual physical key. But we don't need that right now because we got the key fob fully charged, so I just need to push the button right here on the dash to start up the vehicle. So you get a pretty simple steering wheel setup. Here on the left-hand side, we have a directional keypad that'll help you navigate through the features up here in the gauge cluster. You also get buttons to answer and hang up phone calls and activate the uh, virtual assistant feature on the vehicle. On the right-hand side, we have our cruise controls. They're organized in a similar way as this directional keypad. So you just have the uh, on and off button in the center, set buttons, resume, and cancel. I also wanna point out that you only get one stock with this vehicle. So typically I get two, right? Uh, but everything is organized pretty well right here on this stock. So not only can you adjust the windshield wipers, but you can also do the turn signal and the rear uh, windshield wiper as well. Up in the gauge cluster, we have uh, two large dials. So you get RPMs on the left, and then on the right-hand side, you get your uh, temperature gauge and fuel gauge down here, and then a huge digital screen right in the center. So all of this is customizable, so you can sort of change things. But what remains is up here we have a compass showing me uh, that I'm pointed to the northeastern direction, and also a uh, temperature gauge showing me that it's almost 80 degrees outside, uh, which is it's pretty nice. If you can see, it is a bright, sunny day. In the center we have our speedometer. This is actually a digital screen. So when you do accelerate, you'll see the digital needle move really smoothly around the screen. It's actually pretty beautiful. There's also a couple of things we can change, and to do that, I'm gonna press this directional keypad right here, just using the up and down arrows and maybe some left and right. So right now we're on the digital uh, speedometer, and you'll see an icon right there showing us what we're on. If I go up, we have the setup screen. We also have a message screen, so I can see if I have any text messages on my cell phone, along with the uh, Bluetooth connection screen to show me whether or not something is playing over the main uh, screen over here. 
I have the auto stop hold feature right there, which I'll show you in a minute, but basically means that uh, when the car is uh, stopped, the engine is gonna turn off, at least temporarily, just to save a little bit of fuel consumption. Uh, a trip counter, another screen to show us our average speed and, and how long we have uh, with the fuel in the vehicle. So right now, I have a range of about 485 miles, which isn't too bad. Uh, tire pressure. And then we're back to the speedometer screen. So I kind of like this a lot. I like that you can sh uh, shift through a bunch of different features and see all kinds of information about the vehicle. Over to the left, we have uh, lock buttons, window controls, mirror controls right here. Down a little bit further down, we have the memory seat buttons. Up on the dash, we have a dial to control the headlights, along with a dial right here to adjust the brightness of the display up in the gauge cluster. Your fuel cap button is right here below there, and then you also have a push pedal parking brake down there. Up a little bit higher, we have a nice silver latch. And this door, actually I should say the whole vehicle, actually has, I'm not gonna call this old fashioned, but it actually has these little pins to show you if the door is locked or unlocked. And those have been going away in most of the rentals I've had, probably for the last two years. We also have a really nice big side view mirror uh, with blind side detection. So I don't know if you can see it, so let me open up the window. But there's a small triangle right here that will illuminate in yellow if someone is in your blind spot, uh, just to give you a little bit of extra notification. And that same feature is also available on the passenger side. All right, so shifting your gaze up top, we have a number of controls up here. So. You have lights right here and here. There's actually four lights buried in here. So you can activate one of the two lights by simply pushing on this glass piece. And then you can activate the second light by pushing the corresponding button right here. So there's actually two lights. Same thing over here. Push it to turn on one of the lights and then push this button right here to turn on the second light. Button in the center to open and close the hatch. You also get a uh, pretty nice size sunglass holder right here. You also have garage door buttons that you can program right in the center and then controls to activate the moon roof. Which you can see is a great size and really perfect for a day like today. So below there is our uh, rear view mirror. It's got an SOS button on it, a button to control the automatic dimmer feature and then an assist button right here. And then below there, we have our center display. Really nice screen, it's pretty big. Let me show you, for comparison, here's my cell phone and it uh, is easily larger than my phone. That's not always true in a bunch of my rentals. This is a pretty big screen. You have dedicated buttons on the bottom to shift through all the important features, so the radio, what's playing over the Bluetooth connection, climate controls, some apps, uh, heated and cooled seat controls, your nav, and then a phone menu. And then in each screen, you also get a bunch of other features to play around with. So I'm on the media screen right now, and you can see over here, I can cycle through all the different ways to connect my devices to this vehicle. And then you also have quick uh, menu buttons right here, so you can see information about what's playing over my device and uh, what's actually connected uh, to the vehicle. Climate controls, pretty large and easy to use. Uh, just simple controls to adjust the temperature for both the passenger and the driver. Controls in the center to adjust where the vents are blowing. And then additional controls to activate the heated steering wheel feature, the vented seats, and the heated seats. It's almost 80 degrees out right now, so I've been using the vented seats right now, and uh, it's just fantastic. You get a little bit of cool air just blown into the, uh, well, the lower portion of your back, which is nice. The app screen is loaded with quite a bit of features. Uh, I'm not going to go over every single one. I don't want to bore you too much. But it's just nice to see that there is a ton of stuff you can play around with with the vehicle, especially things like backup camera. It's always nice that you can activate that without actually shifting the car into reverse, just if you need to get an extra view about what's behind you. I'm in a parking lot right now. It's completely deserted. Uh, the screen is, eh, it's not great. This is a little grainy. It's not quite as crisp as I was expecting, but it's good enough. You get a nice wide view and you can easily see what's behind the vehicle. And you get some guides right here. So if I turn the steering wheel, the guides will move to help it kind of show you where the vehicle is gonna go if you do reverse. So let's close that out. Nav screen is pretty nice. It looks like you can uh, preset your home and work location. So you can just hit that quickly and have the screen tell you where to go. Um, and you get a nice big display showing you exactly what's around the vehicle. Uh, this is probably one of the largest nav screens I've seen in quite some time. And you can see I'm at the North Square Mall right now. 
Um, just a great screen. It's super responsive. It's also nice to see that you have uh, sort of set things up here to show you what's playing over the uh, system, what temperature you've set the car at. It's at low because it's so hot in here right now. So it's at the absolute low that the system will go for climate. You got a clock, tells you how hot it is outside and how hot you have the temperature set for the passenger, which is probably why I'm so uncomfortable. So let me change that right now. Let's lower that all the way down to low. So pretty good setup. Climate, cons uh, climate controls are also controllable down here. You have dedicated controls already. So you have a volume knob right here and a tuner knob, your hazard button, button to shut on or turn off the screen, which is great, and then a dedicated mute button. But the climate controls are right here. You can adjust the intensity of the fan by moving this, and you do get a pop-up screen up here on the display to show you how high you're setting the, the uh, fan. You also get controls to set the uh, temperature, so you can see you get another pop-up screen right there. And then an AC button and all your standard controls below there, including front and rear defroster buttons. Below there we have the uh, park assist buttons, the auto stop feature, which again means that when you stop the vehicle, the engine is automatically going to turn off to save you just a little bit of fuel. An eco and sport mode right here, and then your traction control button is right here. So let me turn the screen back on, because I just want to show you those pop-ups, like when the screen is off, you see the pop-up screen pop up. The same thing happens if the screen is on. Doesn't matter what menu you're on, what you're looking at on the screen, if you adjust the climate, you get a nice pop-up window that shows you exactly what you're doing. Below there we have a storage cutout. It's got kind of a door on it. It's with some shiny chrome built in. Inside you're going to see a two USB ports, a power jack right here, and then an auxiliary jack right in between those two USB ports. Behind there we get the gear shift. Uh, really smooth. Can you hear that? It doesn't clunk at all. It just shifts to those gears really, really smoothly. And this car does come with a sport shift capability. So if you want to shift it in the drive, you can pop the gear shift over to the left and then shift the gears manually by pushing up or down on the gear shift. And I, I kind of alluded to this before, but when you do put the car in reverse, uh, that rear view camera does automatically pop up for you. So let's put it back into park so I don't drive away. We also get two cup holders right here. Let me clean them out for you. And then a control right here to uh, play around with the four-wheel drive settings. I have it on auto right now, but you can adjust this dial to put it in sand or snow mode. Or you can put it in mud and brock over on the other side. And then there's controls right here to turn on a low speed four-wheel drive. So if you're really going through some tough terrain, and then another button to push if uh, the vehicle is parked on a uh, on a hill. So this works really nice, but you know I do mostly city driving, so I'm just going to keep it on the auto setting. Behind there we get a pretty nice center armrest. It's nice and large, which makes it really comfortable to drive this vehicle. It's got some really soft leather on top, and it opens up to reveal a pretty large storage area. And it also has, you'll see this icon right here, uh, a power port down here for you to use. This also has a system where there's two actual buttons to open up uh, the center armrest. So I pushed the one on bottom, right? And that opened up to reveal the large storage area. But if I were to push the one on top, that reveals a hidden shelf. This is kind of a felt-like material to allow you to store some smaller items and gain access to them. So this is really nice. I tend to kick my cell phone in something like this. So it's kind of hidden. If someone opens this up, they're not going to see your cell unless they know to push the other button. And then over on the passenger side, there's a glove box. Let's take a look. Pretty big size. And it looks like we have a owner's manual with kind of a rugged looking case for it. Uh, this is also a small shelf, which I'm guessing is a perfect size for the owner's manual once it's out of this plastic. It should just slide into this area. Look at that, it's already pretty easily so that you can maintain this space down here to keep other items like your registration or maybe a first aid kit. All right, last thing I want to talk about in the front seat, let me turn down the climate that controls. That fan is a little bit intense right now, is visibility. Out of the front window, no problems at all. And actually, out of the back window, visibility is great. 
I've been having a lot of SUVs lately where those headrests for the passengers just impede on the view out of the back window, or that back window will be like a weird shape that has something cutting through it so you can't actually see out the window itself, but not on this vehicle. Visibility out the rear of the vehicle is fantastic. You can see pretty much everything out of the rear view mirror without anything impeding your vision, and if you turn around and look behind you, it's also pretty great. All right, I jumped in the back seat. I have this driver's seat pack pushed back a pretty good distance, and I still have, I'd say about four to five inches between my knees and the back of that seat, but I do have to sit up pretty straight. I can't really slouch at all, because once I start slouching, that leg room kind of disappears. On the back of the seats for the, uh, well, I should say the back of the front seats, we do have some cargo netting on both seats to give you a little bit of storage. On the back of the center armrest, for the front seat passengers, we also have two dedicated vents with controls right here to open and close the vents. Down below we have heated seat controls, which is pretty phenomenal for passenger seats. A three-prong power port right there, so you can pretty much plug anything you want into this vehicle, along with two USB ports. So this is a pretty fantastic setup. I don't really know what else you can ask for as far as amenities go for passengers, especially at a car at this price point. Let me turn these heated seats off. Got to kind of push it twice. On the door we have uh, window controls, door latch, that door lock that I showed you before. Notice there are no like electronic door locks, at least no buttons back here. So if you want to unlock this door, you have to actually pull it up physically right there. Up top, no handle, but we do get this hook right here to hang a jacket and then sort of a pinhole type light right there. Same thing on the other side, right? Window controls, door latch, door lock, and then up top we also have that small hook to hang a jacket and that small light right there. This is actually pretty rare. Usually you only get a jacket hook on one side of the vehicle, but uh, I guess it's nice that they put it on both sides of the vehicle. So last thing I want to look at is the center armrest. It's got kind of a handle right here to pull it down. Two cup holders right here. Also, let's take a look at car seat anchors real fast. You can see the car seat icon indicator right here. I can't quite make out the car seat anchor all on its own without manipulating the uh, seats. And it is, it's pretty far back there. I have to push my fingers in about this far before I can touch the car seat anchor itself. I don't even know if I can show you. And, and at least in my opinion, that is a very bad sign. That means that if you do need to install a car seat back here, that it is going to be really, really difficult. And I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I got a sticker today for my daughter and uh, I left it on the whole day. Just kind of noticed that. No one mentioned it. All right, so let's close things out by opening up the hatch and taking a look at the storage space on the Grand Cherokee. You know, one of the reasons I like this so much is because it's a big rectangular shape and the wheel wells don't infringe on this area at all. And that just makes it easier to get stuff back here like golf clubs, boxes, suitcases. It all fits really well back here. Also, underneath the floor of this area, you do get a full-size spare. Just note, however, that it's going to cost you another 150 bucks to get a spare tire on this thing. There's also a power port back here. That's great, in my opinion. What I'm not too thrilled about is the privacy screen. I've never used these on any of my vehicles just because I kind of find them difficult to use. This one does pop out of the vehicle really easily, though, so you can remove it without any issues. Um, the rear seats also do fold down really easily, I might add. And when you do that, uh, you reveal just an even bigger storage space back here. You can use almost the entire cabin space to store things, and that is wonderful, in my opinion. So uh, that's pretty much everything end-to-end -end on the 2019 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited 4x4. It's pretty lucky. Got to drive this one for over two days, put quite a bit of miles on it, and uh, I was pretty happy with it. So I don't think you'll be shocked that uh, I'm going to give this one four stars. I really like this one. Maybe it's just because the weather's so nice and it's put me in a good mood, but... Uh, I really enjoyed driving this one, and I was a little bit sad to give it back. Now, the only reason I'm not giving it five stars is because this car lacks the technology that you're seeing on things like the Nissan Rogue, where you get adaptive cruise control and lane assist technology. You don't really see that on the Jeep Grand Cherokee, but hopefully it'll be added in 2020. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time when I rent and review my 134th rental car.
I'll see you then.